welcome to story time with me, Miss Linky. Today's story is called Mona the Vampire and it was written by Sonia Holliman. This is a story about a girl named Mona who becomes a vampire. Let's read it. It was a Friday evening. Mum had gone off to karate class and Dad was reading Mona a really brilliant bedtime story. It was full of wicked witches and ghostly ghouls. It made her eyes pop and her blood curdle. Mona loved it. So did her cat, Fang. I'd like to be a vampire, thought Mona as she was brushing her teeth. I could hang upside down all night and never go to bed. And Fang could scare all the teachers at school. But Mona and Fang were soon fast asleep. Wow, look how messy Mona's bedroom is. She needs to clean up a little bit. On Saturday morning, Mona was up bright and early. She had a busy day ahead. First, she needed a vampire cloak. The long curtains in the dining room were just the thing. Fang loved his new bat wings. Fang and Mona also played with mum's makeup. Mona's plastic glow-in-the-dark fangs made her dribble a bit, but the overall effect was brilliant. Behold, Dracula's daughter, she hissed. Mum made them a special monstrous lunch. They had batwing soup, clammy hammy sandwiches with tomato sauce and squashed fly flan. Fang's favorite were the barbecued blood baps. Fang was learning fast. Mona took him to the end of the garden and taught him all the important things vampires need to know, like always wear clean knickers. Then they played hide and seek a vampire and suck my blood. Ugh. But even vampires are no match for a karate expert like mum. So when she said, I want your room as neat and tidy as a new pin, Mona did her best with Fang's help. On Monday morning, Mona helped mum by making her own sandwiches. She liked lots of tomato sauce. It was so finger-licking fang watering. She put her lunchbox in her bag and poked fang up her jumper. She was taking him to school. Mona told her class all about vampires and showed them some special vampire tricks. No one would sit next to her anymore. Mona always looked forward to gym and playing on the apparatus. She practiced tying all her special knots. Fang loved it. He had so much to learn. When Mona painted a picture on the classroom wall, the teacher shouted, Enough is enough. I cannot have that child in my class. She sent for the headmaster. Enough is enough, shouted the headmaster. Something must be done. Oh no. So Mona went to join the ballet class to calm her down. Fang went too. Mona and Fang taught the good little ballerinas some exciting new point work. But Mr. Kersley, the teacher, didn't like it one bit and snapped. Enough is enough. Luckily for him, it was time to go home. Hooray! shouted Mona and Fang. They didn't want to be calmed down. Mona pedaled cheerfully homeward. Vampires didn't do ballet anyway. Her cape flapped gaily behind her as she sped along. It was the perfect day for vampiring. The wind began to whistle and cold dark rain began to fall. Mona decided to take a shortcut home past the churchyard. The storm grew worse. The lightning cast eerie vampire shadows. The thunder roared like a huge monster and the wind shrieked like a witch on a broomstick. The shrieking and the clamoring woke up the bats in the belfry. Mona pedaled faster. Wow, it's so scary. Mona and Fang skidded around the corner and saw their house at the end of the street. It was a great relief. Even vampires get homesick. And Mona was sick and tired. 
She stood miserably on the doorstep and called for mum. Fang sneezed. Enough is enough, said mum firmly and made hot chocolate for them all. Then Mona was given a nice warm bath and put straight to bed. Mona had rather disturbed dreams that night. Wicked witches and ghostly ghouls came round to play. They had heard all about Mona the vampire. In the morning, a rather pale Mona washed off all her makeup and tidied her room. She brushed the knots out of her hair and put away her fangs. I won't need these anymore, she said. Fang agreed. No more ketchup lunches and definitely no more bat hanging from the ballet bar. And that evening, when mum was at karate, dad read Mona a really brilliant bedtime story. But this time, it was about space invaders. Oh goodness, I can only guess what Mona is going to get up to next. Mona had such a wild imagination that she didn't only end up scaring everyone else, she ended up scaring herself. What a fun story. I hope you enjoyed it with me and I'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>